Welcome back, Zero K fans, to another exhibition match. This is Shadow 333, bringing you a match between Flipstep and Lorio. On Titan Duel, once again, we see this map a lot. This is a pretty popular map, so yeah, I guess get used to it. It's not a bad map, though, it's just very vehicle heavy, and that can be a bit different. It's vehicle heavy, it has a lot of. A lot of choke points just caused by these big dips, so that is a big thing to worry about. And a fair amount of metal, too. I'm honestly not sure how suitable it is for 1v1. It works, but it seems like it was designed more as a team map than anything else. Anyway, Flipstep going for Light Vehicles, as is Lorio. And Lorio going a bit more for Scouts with Darts, while Flipstep actually just going for more Scouts. Getting pretty quick Scorchers, though, while Lorio is not. He's focusing entirely on Morphing's Commander. He's... Riot Cannon Energy Cell, so he's focused, he's assuming that he's going to see a fair amount of Raiders coming in, trying to basically get the leveler weapon on his commander. And of course the E-Cell, you, you always get E-Cell, that's... No one pretty much ever plays commander without E-Cell, it's, it's very rare that you see that. Now we will see pretty soon that the Riot Gun is actually going to be quite useful for dealing with these. Or should be, anyway. Why is it not firing? That was bizarre. What is this fire range? Oh, it's pretty low. Okay, never mind. That kind of makes sense, but the Riot Gun, unless I'm misremembering, is a very fast weapon. I mean, the leveler weapon it is an extremely fast weapon. It is it basically hits almost as soon as it fires. That's the great power of it to deal with raiders. And as we can see, Lorio, he is trying to scout around. Flipstep does have his base fairly well defended. Flipstep does have a Lotus up, as does Lorio. I mean, both players are getting some safe defenses. Probably a bit too soon, but it's not that terrible. Especially at this level, it's not going to be that big of a deal. So, Lorio, a bit surprising though, his Scorchers are staying at home. Now, I know Titan Duel is a, it's a bit of a difficult map to push forward on because of the fact that you have this path here as well as the path to the north or to the south. Because there's such a wide opening to the main base, it's kind of nerve-wracking to move out because you don't know if your opponent's going to come in from a side that you haven't pushed in. That is, they're not going to come in just from the straight diagonal. They're going to come in along a longer route, but then avoid your units. And that's really hard to deal with because you have to then move your units around given the size of the map. That's quite difficult to do. And it looks like Flipstep is doing exactly that. Granted, it's with a dart, but it's still something to worry about. So Lorio focused probably a bit too much on defense. He should be moving forward. He should be trying to make sure that he has enough, well, enough units forward to get map control and also... Try to harass Flipstep a bit. Admittedly, it'd be a little bit difficult, but at this point, there isn't any defense on this metal extractor. There is some defense on this metal extractor here, but the Lotus will be taken care of by the Slashers without issue. And it looks like he is starting to move forward. Yes, he is indeed moving forward with these Slashers. And, it's not Slashers, it's Scorchers. Slashers are being built by Flipstep in order to deal with Lorio's incoming forces. And Lorio, fo he is falling back. Why isn't, I mean, yeah, why is he not attacking that... Okay, more better question, why is he not falling back and then in the process of falling back, forcing Flipstep's slasher to come to him, going to the slasher and attacking it while it's in motion? Because that's what you want to do with slashers, you make, make sure they're moving and then attack them as they're moving. And it looks like he is now doing that, Lorio coming in and dealing with that slasher, no problem, especially with his commander up front. Moving his commander forward and now, now is the time to attack. He needs to move forward with these four slashers and he is doing exactly that. So he is taking advantage of the fact that he has an opening that Flipstep has left himself open just as a result of losing his units. And these Slashers coming in very nicely. A leveler, however, needs to be avoided by the Scorchers, not Slashers. Admittedly, Slashers probably avoided too. I don't know why I keep confusing the two. Scorchers need to avoid that leveler. Slashers... Not advised to get too close, but it's not a terrible idea. However, that leveler is being distracted by the Commander and Lorio taking advantage of this again and pushing his Slashers forward. Very nicely done. Sorry, Scorchers forward. The Heat Ray guys, the... Obviously you can see what's going on, so even if I mess up the names, it won't be the biggest deal. These are Scorchers, and they're moving forward. However, a lot of damage has been dealt, and they won't be able to easily get through. Now, two of them... At, no, none of them are going towards the side. Obviously, a bunch of them are going towards the side, and that will help, but... Unfortunately, no, they are not. They're going straight for the units, and not going for the economy, and... Losing all those units... <sighs> Ouch. Lorio just donated a ton of metal to Flipstep, which he is... Flipstep has taken full advantage of this. Admittedly, Flipstep's actually... He's a bit ahead on metal, and even with his... 
commander building and his worker building and another worker assisting a factory, it's still a lot of metal being pushed in there. While Lorio, that was a, that would have been a very powerful harassment had he gone to the side, dealt with his metal extractor. He would have had to deal with the defenses, mind you. But if you gone to the side and avoided the commander directly, avoided attacking the units, because you don't want to attack your enemy's units. That's the la or your opponent rather's units. That's the last thing you want to do. What you want to attack is where the units aren't. Force the units to move, get out of position, and then deal with their economy while the units are out of position. That's what you want to do. Attacking when their units are there is not that useful unless you know you're going to be able to get out on top once the dust settles. Which, Lorio did not have that advantage. He was moving into lips of territory. At this point, he is trying to go for it again, but given that he is dealing... Actually, given that he's dealing with darts, it's rather difficult being that they're... They're running circles around his ravagers very nicely. Lorio's... I don't even know if he's micro... No, he's micromanaging this. He's actually doing a pretty good job. Or, hold on. No, that can't be right. No, Lorio looks like he's... He can't be dealing with this because he is not actually focusing on this at all. He is focusing entirely on other stuff. He wouldn't even have those selected. But... Still a nice distraction on the Ravagers, and nearly killed them, too. Wow, if this leveler gets behind these last two Ravagers, they're going to go down. And Flipstip is, at the same time, pushing forward. Now, Lorio actually started to aggressively expand, or not just started to, he's aggressively expanding for a little while, a couple minutes now. Protected by these Ravagers, though, it looks like it may start to backfire on him. Flipstip very nicely using these darts, very cleverly micromanaging them around. Unfortunately, the defenders do have homing, so it's not as easy as it is against the Ravagers. But still, pushing them back a bit, Flipstep can get a bit more map control, but he's falling back on that. His main advantage has been the fact that he was donated some metal early on, and he took it all. At this point, he does have a major production advantage, and Dominatrix coming up, and we saw what happened last game with the Dominatrix. Okay, admittedly, it didn't actually ultimately win the game in the end, but still, we saw what happened in the interim before it was destroyed, how powerful that thing can be. But both players are pushing 20 build power in... Actually, no, 25 build power for Flipstep, but he only has 20 metal, so... Ultimately, 20 build power for each player, for each factory. So a lot of vehicles will be coming up very shortly, and mostly Ravagers and Levelers for Lorio and Dominatrix with a bunch of Slashers supporting it. No, multiple Dominatrices with flash, Slashers supporting it for Lorio, and it looks like... Sorry, for Flipstep, and it looks like Lorio may start losing his units... One of the Ravagers is about to go... Actually, Flipstead losing his commander in the process, however, but one of the Ravagers... Two of the Ravagers getting taken, and Lorio starting to take a lot of damage from his own Ravagers. Unfortunately for Flipstead, the last Ravager to be captured was the healthiest. The other two were fairly damaged beforehand and are taking a lot of damage now. But fortunately for Lorio, his commander going down. That's the end of his commander, and also end of a lot of his units. Flipstep is turning this right around with Dominatrices. He's going to be able to just march through these defenses. The biggest hurdle is going to be the fact that the solar collectors are kind of in the way of the defenders, but not that much. One of the Ravagers, however, going down. But these Slashers are in the perfect position to deal with the defenders. Now, more Ravagers coming in from Lorio. He is building more and more Ravagers and Levelers, not countering Dominatrix the Dominatrix, but more Dominatrices are on the way for Flipstep. So Flipstep entirely focused, essentially, on unit Judo, using his opponent's strength against him, and that is... Actually not working out especially well. I mean, he's working out okay, but his main asset is actually being these slashers. The fact that he's capturing the Ravagers is counting for not all that much. It's it's definitely growing. The strength of that is growing, but his slashers are right now the biggest thing for him. The captured units are basically just running interference on any, uh, any opposition Lorio will try to muster. But Lorio, being quite smart about this, he is trying to pack up a bunch of units first before he moves in. Now, the really smart thing to do would be avoid these captured units, go around to the Dominatrix, and is he doing that? No, he's moving back a bit. If he goes around to get this Dominatrix, he doesn't know where it is, unfortunately, for him. He does have radar coverage. Actually, he knows that he just walked into radar coverage. I think he knows what it is. I'm pretty sure he'd have the information that it is, in fact, a Dominatrix. So if he goes up there and kills that Dominatrix, then he will have most of his units back. And then kills the other one, he'll have the rest of his units back. Though more Dominatrices are on the way, and Flipstep is moving in for the kill, and a Dominatrix actually... Going in for counter, a slasher coming in here, and Lorio and Flipstep are fighting for control over one of the slashers, and this Ravager and Leveler combo, not quite sure if it can move forward. But yeah, Dominatrices are coming in for Lorio, and in stronger numbers than they were for Flipstep. And the slasher trying, the slasher line starting to fall back, but even then, the Dominatrix war is being won by Flipstep. It is kind of a question of who fires second. Because whoever fires first, their reload time is gone, and it looks like Lorio realizes he cannot do anything about this. 
And that is game. Whew. Wow, I didn't realize Dominatrices were so popular. I mean, you see them from time to time, but... In the last two games we saw, those are huge. There we go. So, hope you enjoyed that. I will be back in a couple minutes with yet another game, so stay tuned. That'll be going on shortly.